I, it's time for another one of our flower arranging rituals. Um, I love talking about it that way because I think that it's fun that we should have a special setup for what we're going to do and how we're going to uh, enjoy our arranging of flowers. And I think that that's so important. I'm reading a book right now that talks about different rituals that you can do for different things, a ritual for gratitude, a, rit a ritual for sorrow, a ritual for grief, a ritual, a ritual for, you know, so you, you, you've got a ritual for different types of things. And I like to have a ritual for flowers. This is also interesting for me too, because this is a ritual of creating flowers for my mother-in-law. I want to make sure that while we're sheltering in place and while we're doing all the things that we're doing right now and staying safe and well, that she has flowers. And so um, this is a vase that works really well for her. It's a vase that she can see. She can add water to so that she knows when the water is getting depleted inside here. And, you know, and we have a really neat program because I bring a new arrangement and then the old vase is in the garage so I can grab that vase and bring it home and fill it up with flowers and then take it back. So it works out good. So we've got a contactless delivery system almost for it. So that's great. But I thought today we would use some of these beautiful flowers that I have to create a beautiful spring type arrangement. Okay. And the other thing I wanted to tell you about is if you want to see uh, my mother-in-law and her friends on ubloom.com, we have a video called Sorority Sisters. And you can go to ubloom.com and you can type in Sorority Sisters and it'll bring it up for you and you can watch it. It is, um, my mother-in-law belongs to the longest standing Beta Sigma Phi sorority in the United States. Yeah, it's right here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I started doing programs for them, oh gosh, probably 25 years ago. And when we did that, there was probably like 20 of them or so. And now I think that there's maybe like eight or nine that are left, but they still get together. And every year we have a spring uh, event where they bring vases and then I fill them with flowers. And we were unable to have it this year because of COVID. But um, typically what I did was I would go and I would make arrangements for them and give it to them. Well, I finally decided that it would be more fun to get them involved in the process and allow them to share a little bit of their own history. And so what they do is they bring a vase and then they have to tell me the story behind it and where they got it and why it's special to them. And you'll see in the video that some of them, one of them um, had a vase that was given to them by an exchange student that they had when he was in high school. Um, one of them had, uh, she lived next to the Fenton factory and she brought a Fenton vase. Um, we used to sell Fenton when I had my flower shop. And so it's just a great way for them to get their memories off the shelf and then tell the story and share the story behind it. So I'm hoping that later this year we'll be able to get together for that because we we weren't able to do it last year and I hope that we can this year because it would be fun. And it's one of my favorite things to do. They always joke and they're like, well, when you don't want to do it anymore, it's so much fun. I just can't tell you how much fun it is to listen to these wonderful ladies who have been friends since they were in, you know, I don't know, high school, college, workforce. I mean, many of them have been friends for over 50 years. Um, you know, most of them are over 90 or not, are 90 years old or older. Okay. A couple of them aren't quite 90 yet. So apologies to those that aren't. But, um, but yeah, no, they've been friends for that long and they get together and they have these. And I, I know that they decided they couldn't have their Christmas party this year. And they're going to have Christmas in July, hopefully, fingers crossed. So, um, but check it out. Check out Sorority Sisters and you're going to meet them and you're going to be able to see uh, my, my mother-in-law, Mary Lou, and, and my other mom, uh, Mary Lou's best friend, Lorraine. And I just call Lorraine my other mom because it's easier when we all go out as a group. When we used to go out as a group, people would say, oh, are these your moms? And I would say, yeah this year, my mom's. So um, it was great. So that was just a fun way for us to do that. So you'll get to see them too. And, and they talk about their first memories of flowers too, which is, which is so cool. So, okay. Enough about that. We're going to make a flower arrangement. So um, I hope you're having a great day. Um, I went to uh, my wholesaler, my wholesaler is Kennecott Brothers, and I got flowers the other day, uh, wore my mask, um, they require masks in there, it's all great. Uh, my friend Angie helps me and make sure that I get beautiful flowers. I pick out all the flowers myself, and I brought them back here. And so when I was looking at the colors of what I was selecting, reason I brought up the sorority sisters, is that the Beta Sigma Phi flower is a yellow rose. 
And so whenever somebody in their group had a baby or they had an anniversary or they had a birthday or even for their celebrations of life, they use yellow roses. And so it's always nice when I make an arrangement for my mother-in-law that I can do uh, yellow, yellow roses. I think that that's fun. She enjoys that and that's nice. So um, we're going to use some yellow roses in here. We're also going to use some... Uh, I, I, I have I have some tulips here. I've got some beautiful uh, pom poms. I've got some pretty carnations. So we're just gonna make something that's real pretty, okay? And um, I I did have hyacinths. I don't use hyacinths because um, it's one of the flowers that my my mother in law doesn't like. Uh, she doesn't like the fragrance of them. So I'm always cautious about that. She does love gardenias, so I know that when we can have gardenias, that that's a good thing to have in there too. So but I don't have gardenias today either. So. All right, but we have yellow roses. So we shall get started. Let's start with, um, I think I'm gonna just use a fatsia leaf off one side. I love these fatsia leaves because they look like uh, fingers. Um, look at that. They have like a, like a hand almost, right? And I'm gonna grab a little bit bigger one. There's a big one. And I'm going to do another one on the other side. Look at how that almost forms a collar around it. Okay, it's pretty fun. And um, that gives me a couple of crossed stems down inside there so that we start to create a little bit of a structure that's going to hold things in place. Um, I am going to start with a few of these yellow roses, okay? So we've got those. Um, High and Exotic, I believe, is the variety name of these. Um, they're grown in Colombia, and they're beautiful yellow rose. I'm just going to go around, follow my collar a little bit around. You'll notice you can see my stems crossing in place down there. And then when I have those stems crossed down below there, they are going to be able to support the other flowers that I'm gonna put in here, okay? Um, I love, you know, this is something I always make it so that it can be seen from all sides because where I put it in her home, she can view it from all sides. She can view it from the dining room. She can view it from the living room. She can view it from her chair where she watches TV. I want to be able to make sure it's pretty on all sides. And see, look at now, I put that flower right in the center, and that flower is going to be able to stand up because it has the support of the other flowers inside there, okay? And again, I love this vase. Um, this, is a, this is a vase that has been around for a long time. Lots of different people carry this vase, um, whether it's WGV, Gla WGB glass, um, whether it's, uh, um, you know, different people. Um, I think I originally got it from Accent Decor, but this is a, a very, very common vase and it's slender in the middle. So what that means is it helps take the stems and force the stems out at the bottom and the heads out at the top. And that makes it a smart vase for us to be able to arrange them because it makes it easier. Okay. And so that's, that's pretty fun and pretty simple. So let's see here. Um, <laughs> let's use a few tulips. I love these tulips because they're a little, they're a bright orange red. And a, I know that my mother in law loves a bright orange red type color. And there's a little bit of a yellow thread on the bottom of it. See? It's got a little bit of a yellow thread on the bottom. And so. When I add this, it's going to amplify that yellow accent in this arrangement, right? And I think that that's so fun. These are very strong, sturdy tulips, um, obviously. And again, I have kept the wrapper on them in the container. Um, in, their, in their bucket back there so that they straighten up. When I picked them up the other day, they are dry packed. And what that means is that they are shipped not in water. They are shipped dry. So thus, dry pack, packed dry. And that is the best way to ship tulips. They are still in bud. They did not have this much color yesterday. 
um, because when I process them, I put them into Chrysler Professional 3, and that activated the flowers, and they started to grow, and as they grow, increase in size, and so um, they were starting to grow like this, because they'd been laying flat in a box, and they were stressing to go towards the light, right? And so I left them inside this cellophane, and I didn't cut them. Okay. When I brought them back from the wholesale house, I brought them back dry. I just placed them into my bucket without cutting them. That slows down their advancement. Okay. They're still, they have a, they have a very, very strong, um, not the strongest, but a very strong uh, vascular system. Okay. And so that allowed them to me to slow them down a little bit. And then as I place them in here, then they're, they're in here with um, cold water. And we used our Chrysler Professional 3 again in the water. So um, here it is, this guy. This holds a gallon of water, one squirt, and we're ready. Okay. So that's all set to go. Now look at that. Look at how already how great that's looking. And look at that contrast between those two colors and how that yellow starts to pick up the other colors that are in there. Now, I think we wanna make this springy, right? So um, I have a couple of options here, but I think I'm gonna go with some of these pink hypericum. Look how pretty that is, right? Okay, beautiful. And so we're gonna use that. Um, I'm using my cutters today, my cutters, I'm using my compact pruners from Dram and also my bypass cutter because I'm using woody stems like this works really well on it. Um, I'm using my purple colored ones. I you just got, look at this guy too. I just got this purple um, watering can. It's from our friends at Arcadia Garden Products. So you can look them up online, Arcadia Garden Products. And um, I love it because it matches these guys. So they all look good together, right? It's fun. All right. Also matches the walls in here in our little flower studio too. Nothing better than having things that match. So now see how I'm filling in between those with my hypericum. And what I'm doing is I'm removing all of those leaves that would fall below the waterline, okay? And they're gonna go down in there because I don't want any leaves down here, okay? No leaves down under, the, under that waterline because we wanna make sure that we don't have any bacteria going on inside this arrangement. And that's going to, because that bacteria it's going to cause the flowers not to last as long. Okay. Let's see. I got one more. I need one more rose. I feel like I'm missing one right here. There we go. Look how pretty that is. Ta-da! Looking great. Okay. So now, I think I'm going to use a couple of iris. I've got three. And again, as we talked, always great to have the iris not so open when we're purchasing them because we want to enjoy them in our arrangement. And we want to make sure that we get to experience them opening up because that's part of the great part about having flowers in our home is that they make us feel happier. They make us feel less depressed. They make us enlarge our circles of friends. They, um, homes that have flowers in them have less disagreements. Um, you know, just, there's so many great benefits that go along with it. And look at that. Now we've added a little bit of that yellow inside there with that. And the yellow is going to get picked up. Look at this yellow inside that iris is picking up those other yellows that we have on the edge of the tulips on those blooms. Really pretty. All right. So then we're going to use a couple of these Clooney. Uh, I saw these at the wholesale house. They were not in it, uh, inexpensive. Okay. They were expensive. That's all there is to it, but they're beautiful and they last such a long time, but look at them. Look how pretty those are. Right. And so we're going to use a couple of those Clooney, uh, ranunculus in this. Okay. Now look at, I also have this piece that has those two little buds on it. And I'm going to tuck that in here too, because with our Chrysler Professional 3 in our water supply, those are going to open up. Okay. And so I just got to make sure I get him down into the water. Okay. 
He's playing around and tricking me a little bit, right? There he goes. There he goes. Okay. He's kind of tucked down in there. And then we'll put one here. Look at that. Great that looks. Okay. A little bit of that green in there. I'm going to put him right here, I think. Look at that. That looks awesome in there. All right. Okay. Now, I think I want a couple of these green. They're kind of a minty green. I got two different colors of green when I went to the wholesale house. I got one that was darker green. I got one that's darker green, and I got one that's lighter green. See? Okay. And I'm going to use the lighter green in here because I think it gives us a little bit more pastel-y type look. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that we remove any bad leaves that are on there. I'm going to use my compact pruner. I have a stem in there that doesn't have a bloom on it. So I want to pull that off. There we go. And when we add this, green coloration again i know i always remind you of that but i just think it's so important because it's such a great color technique to add some lime green to your arrangement because when you add that chartreuse green or that acid green to the arrangement it makes the other colors become more vibrant and just having that stem in here even like in the middle of this bouquet makes those flowers look more vibrant all right Super easy way to do that. One little broken guy. I love these compact pruners because they're so great because they're such detail. You know, they're, they're great for Ikebana too. Uh, they're also great for bonsai. Um, I use them to trim my trees. I'm so excited to have a bonsai tree um, that I started, la that I got last year on my birthday. It was the last event I did before the world shut down. Um, and it was a home and garden show in Grand Rapids. And I got a uh, chain... Uh, yeah, a Japanese maple, a Japanese maple that um, as a bonsai tree. And it's, and I took it outside. I let it winter over in the fall, lost all its leaves, everything. I brought it in the house. It was dormant. I planted it and it's all sprouted leaves again. It's so awesome. I'll show it to you one of these days. We'll, we'll, we'll bring it out here. And we'll look at it. Okay. So now look at now these, these little buds too are going to open up on those ranunculus. So I think that that's really pretty too. I'm going to add a few of these purple carnations. These are from Florigene. Look at them. They're almost like they're peppermint. They're like a purple peppermint. Wow, they're kind of striped and stuff, right? And I love that. Now, the thing about um, Florigene carnations is that they're so long lasting. Um, what they are is they are genetically modified flowers because carnations do not come in this color. And so what they did was they crossed and put a gene of a hyacinth or a violet in these carnations to create this color, which is ingenious, okay? I mean, that's, and that's, that's how hybridization works, only they use gene splicing to do it as opposed to selective breeding, right? Because they were crossing species. Now, what's interesting about this though is when they were doing that, they decided, hey, you know what would be great is while we're in here doing that, we could also remove the DNA that is sensitive to Botrytis. And so they did that. And so these carnations physically last longer because they don't have the gene that is sensitive to Botrytis. So they last so much longer. Amazing, right? So now look at that. Look at how pretty that is. Now, we also talk about this, and this is one something that I noticed. As I was going in here, I'm noticing that the stems are getting tight together inside this part of the vase. And so when I'm finally finished with this, I just want to reach in and give it a little fluff. And I don't know if you can even see there, but I'm just giving everybody a little bit of a fluff because as I add flowers, I'm always pushing them down into the water. And so they get pushed down into the vase, giving them that little bit of a fluff 
is a super easy way to just make it look a little bit um, more loose, okay, and give everybody a little bit more room. My final step to coat with Chrysler Professional Glory. Uh, let's see. My sprayer's given out on me. How about that? Don't know why. All right. But we want to make sure that we coat it. I'm going to get a new sprayer before the next time looks like. How about that? Okay. So um, we want to spray it so it's going to last about 25% longer. Okay. Pretty little arrangement. Look, I have a hole right there, right? We cannot have a hole right there. Fixed. There we go. Now it looks good. All right. Okay, so I hope you had fun. Um, it's just a great way to add our beautiful flowers together. We started off with our roses. We added our tulips, which also had that wonderful little yellow edge. We added some iris that also had that yellow edge. We complemented it with some pink hypericum and these beautiful uh, chartreuse green spray chrysanthemums. Wonderful way for us to put those in there. We have these beautiful Clooney uh, type ranunculus that have the little green and pink edge. They look so wonderful. They're going to be really long lasting inside this arrangement. And then along with long lasting our foraging carnations, which are just exquisite inside here. So it's a nice little pastel looking arrangement that's going to be perfect and it's going to brighten up anybody's day. All right. I hope you had fun. And uh, remember, um, you're watching here. Make sure you subscribe so that you can get, get a notification every single time that we do a video. And also hit the bell because that's going to send you a reminder so that you know when we these premieres are coming up. I chat live with you over in the in the live chat on the side. So you can ask me questions there or you can always email me at j at All right. Have a great day. Keep having fun with flowers.